Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta with my friend, Catherine Edwards, for our coffee chat. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> Catherine's been away. I died and was resurrected. I don't know. It's, uh, we've both been sick. It's uh, it's uh, it's been quite a few weeks, but 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 nonetheless, we're 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 pushing through today. How are you, Catherine? Well, I feel like it's not been a few weeks. I feel it's been a few lifetimes, and I've got so much to talk to you in the audience about today. I've been so looking forward to this because when we say we make jokes about the whole world has gone mad, it's gone completely mad. I had a trip to the States and well, that's, where do I even begin? But yeah, let's kick off with some of the things we were going to talk about and we will bring in, we will embrace the madness. Embrace the chaos. Yeah, it's I, I feel like people have just lost lost their sense of reality and i know that i've lost my sense of reality from time to time and part of a spiritual practice is regrounding yourself in that reality and we were laughing about the emergency um broadcast that are the 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 alert we got on our cell phones yesterday here in the united states and you had asked me catherine like what my thoughts were on it and i was like honestly we get these things all the time like I, and and this yeah. is what's so crazy to me is like it didn't it meant nothing to me because we get these all the time when we were children for you for you guys watching right now if you're an american think back to when we were children before we had cell phones the emergency alert they would test it the te they would test it every couple of months on your tv and so you would be watching tv and all of a sudden the screen would go, it would be the rainbow color to go, and it would, it would do this emergency alert sound and say, this is just a test. Repeat, this is just a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is just a test. And it would last like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and then it would go off and your show would come back on. And so we've dealt with these. I'm 40 years old. I've dealt with these for 40 years. It's yeah. not there was not that. Not, and I was laughing with you, Catherine, because it went off yesterday at around 2, 220. And there's this great Instagram uh, page that I follow, and it's called Southern Humor. Humor, And it talks about, like, Southerners, like how we can smell rain coming. And one of the videos they show is that a Southerner will sleep through, through anything. We'll sleep through tornadoes. We'll sleep through hurricanes. Unless the air conditioning gets cut off, then we wake up. You know? And so... <laughs> And so I'm thinking with it, even with an EBS, most people in the South are just going to throw the phone against the wall and go back to sleep anyway, you know? So it's not even that handy of a thing to alert people. I mean, when you were in Texas, you got the Amber Alert, which is... The yeah, I got it on my phone when I was in Texas. And I was like, what's this? How do I turn it off? Because we don't get those over here. But I was laughing because I, I haven't watched a lot of it, but I saw so many people and the truth is talking about you need to turn your phone off you need to wrap it in tin foil and this complete delusion now i think it was last summer um there was a we were having a test of an emergency broadcast in the uk which actually failed catastrophically because most people's phones didn't go off so that was interesting but we had the same thing then with everyone saying oh it's going to activate the graphene oxide in you you're all going to drop dead you've all got to do this you've all got to do that and it was just unbelievable, Bryce, because I was, on the day it was going off, I was at Wembley Stadium watching a big football match with my daughter. My husband and son were at another big football stadium. And it was like, look, guys, get this in perspective. If they're going to do things like that, they, how obvious would it be if they put an emergency forecast and everyone just dropped dead? I mean, one, that's just pretty silly, really, because it's pretty traceable to who's doing it. Right. Secondly, they've been putting these poisons in this for years and years and years and years. If people just actually started looking about what's in their breakfast cereal, which we're going to be talking about in another thing, if they started looking at what's in your meat, anyone who eats crab sticks or salmon and prawns about how that's nothing to do with it, it's all coloured, dyed, everything. Yeah. So this delusion of, um, it makes me so frustrated, really, and like you said, it is really important to say we've all fallen for it. But isn't this like the main message of what we've all been talking about for the for last few years is once you've fallen for it once, the idea is you learn from it. Yeah. And you just keep repeating it. And what I'm seeing is it's just repeated. And then everyone keeps putting out as soon as someone puts out on their video, this is not meant to cause fear. This is this. It's like 
you don't say what you're not doing it shows that deep down there is a cause it's like the people whose relationships are always in the worst always posting love things to each other on facebook you know it's yeah. like honestly guys if we want to be taken seriously in any shape or form we've got to do better than this oh absolutely i was just i mean i was cracking up yesterday or was it yesterday when the alarm went off because it's like i mean come on you guys like we we especially the americans like s sit down for a minute take a deep breath think about our childhood how many times were you sitting i mean because i know back in the 80s and 90s my sister and i used to sit right up on the tv screen don't yeah. do that we've learned now because usually the remote was was missing so you have to change the channel by your hand you know and how many times we would be watching a cartoon or some show and all of a sudden it would just shut off and it was an emergency alert and they didn't send us back in those days we didn't know when they were going to be doing an emergency alert they didn't tell us yeah. they just do them um you know it's because people didn't have cell phones so most of the time people had a tv on so for us down here in the south if there was we get bad tornadoes every single year we'll have like three or four tornadoes run through and i laugh because we usually sleep through them because that's how used to them we are but they can be deadly and so they yeah. would run these emergency alerts to tell us if there was a tornado spotted for us to take cover it, there's a, there's a reason why you know not every single person in government is out to get you you know there's yeah. a reason why they run these emergency alerts i mean here in atlanta you can still even hear the factory horns going off from time to time like you'll be out i'll be out walking the dog and i'll hear the the alarm going off at a factory and it, it's to signify lunchtime or time off but it's kind of freaky to hear it but we're so immune to that stuff that we don't even notice it half the time now and so when someone brings attention to it all of a sudden it becomes it becomes the boy who cried wolf and that's what that's the problem the cried wolf. yeah and i think you've hit on so many different things and I, d I don't think this is easy for anyone, myself included, in terms of this, for me, is the biggest learning curve I'm still on over the last few years, is knowing how to educate yourself to enough detail where you can be aware of what's going on without getting completely extreme and ridiculous about it and it's a seesaw and it's a fine balance so you know one example of that is is this like water quality you know i arrived at dallas fort worth X and i needed some water and all the water was just like added minerals and vitamins and i was just like almost like in a straight trauma thinking i don't want to drink that but at the end of the day you need water and your body's resilient and if you were drinking that water all day every day you'd be in trouble but if you're just drinking it once in a while your body can cope with it we've been coping with loads of stuff and this is the balance is where anyone that's on this journey and i'd love to know what works for people below is not getting completely extreme about it you know we've to, you and i are fascinated with cult behavior for this exact reason is there can be very good ideas that can turn fanatical and this can happen in any aspect of your life. And certainly we've seen it happening in the community that we've been passed on to. And, you know, I don't care what people say. There's so much fear. The amount of people, I had a conversation with someone the other day, and I know you and I have spoken about this before, Bryce, is that, do you know what? Some of the happiest people I know at the moment are the people that have no idea about any agendas going on. They're doing their own gardening. They're walking their dogs. They're spending time playing with the with their kids. They're enjoying their weekend. If they want to go and watch football at the weekend, they're going and they're enjoying it because the whole spiritual journey on one hand is all about being in the present moment and being here right here right now you mentioned right at the start about grounding yourself so important and it is a really difficult balance for people to say well how much do i try and understand what's going on so we can positively influence it and not be fooled by it for the rest of our lives but still enjoy our life right i agree and it's crazy and and, and i i agree it's um we my boyfriend calls it the junk conspiracy cul-de-sac. And yeah. so, um, and it, go, it goes back to that, as I've said, when I was doing my missing books of the Bible, we talked a lot about on my, on my channel, Gnosis and EDO. Gnosis is inner knowing, EDO is outer knowing. EDO is like your education, like your, your book smarts. Your, but your Gnosis is your inner knowing. And the ancients used to believe that EDO was great, but it wasn't as valuable as Gnosis. And so yeah. what's tend to happen though, is I've noticed in, in our community is that we know there are certain 
realities in this world that aren't as as they we get that we're not saying that there isn't there obviously there are bad guys there are things going on we get that their religious practices are horrific we get that however what tends to happen is we have these trojan horse moments where the bad guys will realize people are understanding this and so they'll send in a trojan horse right they'll send in false information to get you wound up and get you directed over into this junk conspiracy cul-de-sac where you're just turning circles while the real story is happening over here yeah i feel like the ebs that happened yesterday is another prime example of a trojan horse you know it, i don't in my like i don't think that there was anything to it but what they said it was it was just an yeah. emergency test that's all it was there was nothing to it same emergency test we've had since the beginning of technology since the beginning of my time on this earth it's there was nothing nefarious about it nothing it just it just is what it is but so many people get so wound up in the EDO and they get stuck in this junk conspiracy cul-de-sac chasing their own tail that they forget to sit and do the gnosis and actually really ground themselves and think, okay, let me think this through. Let me reflect on this for a moment because this is no different than anything else that I went through as with an emergency system, like as a child or anything like that. And I think that's what the huge difference is, you know, when when and my boyfriend has said this before and Catherine knows my knows my boyfriend that sometimes when people wake up they really want to go back to sleep like there's this desire yeah. to go back to sleep even if it even if it's not conscious it's more subconscious and so what they'll do is they'll cling they'll go from watching like anderson cooper and to having anderson cooper tell them how to feel and tell them their opinions to then listening to another youtuber tell them how to feel and tell them their opinions and so by pu putting themselves back into this junk conspiracy cul-de-sac they've essentially gone back to sleep they're just in another dream Maybe. world and so in order to have your own sovereignty your own gnosis your own autonomy you have to be able to take everything told to you with everyone even what we're saying with a grain of salt into your own reflections and your own research into that so you can understand what's going on but also live your life i mean catherine how many people on telegram have you noticed stopped paying their mortgages because they were told quantum was coming in and now they're getting evicted from their houses you know so many. it's happening to so so many people and again by us saying this i'm just bringing up whilst i'm speaking something that i posted i think i sent it to you um so many people what please don't get us wrong we're not saying it's not possible to look into the right way to not pay your mortgage we're not saying that at all but what we are saying is we're saying that actually there's an awful lot of really bad advice as well um and you know this sums it up i posted this on my facebook to sum up my 25 years or so of research everything is a lie and i don't have a fucking link <laughs> because and the reason i love that is if i have one more person is the thing is is like we all have that inner gnosis mm -hmm. and you get to a stage where you've done enough work yourself on whatever topic and it would be different for each of us because all our life circumstances are different i've got children so 25 years ago i started um researching these big time for children because i was pregnant and i wanted to know if i hadn't have had children then i wouldn't have i'm yeah. sure i wouldn't have done that research so what i'm saying is we've all got different priorities because our different life circumstances will will affect what's a priority for us at that time in our life you know now my children are adults i have my priorities have shifted completely again because they're making their own decisions for things now um but the whole point about that is is some people you can never can please everyone so some people want research on everything but if you want that research it's your job to go out and get it and there can be people that can help you but it's not their job to provide it because if we're talking about a certain subject you know the information that bryce might need to convince her might be very different to what i need it's not our job and it's not anyone else's job and going back to the emergency broadcast really controversial but if you look at what's happened in lahaina you know they didn't put off i know that wasn't the emergency broadcast system started it was the sirens and they didn't put them off and and quite frankly horrendous that they yeah. didn't and there was a lot of other dubious goings on there that you all know about but it's a bit you're buggered if you do and buggered if you don't the fact that we've all got these that we carry around everywhere with us 
can be life changing. They can save a life. You know, we don't have, a, I've never had an Amber Alert for a child going missing and it came up on my phone while I was in Texas. If that was my child missing, I'd be so grateful that everyone had one of these in their pockets. So if it's really important and you're really worried that someone can send a message through your phone to exterminate you, because we've all got graphene in us. It's not just in the you know what, it's in everything, you yeah. know, and you wouldn't know whether you've got it in you or not. If you really believe that, then you shouldn't be carrying one of these. You shouldn't just be putting it away for one moment, because if they really wanted to kill you, they wouldn't tell you they were going to do it at 2.30 or no. On a Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> you know? So this is what I mean, is it's very easy to blame other people. But if it's that important to you, I will not get in any electric cars for mm -hmm. loads of reasons. I will not get in one. And the reason I don't is I genuinely believe, I'm not asking anyone else to, I genuinely believe that they're death traps because of the EMF. I believe they're like Faraday cages and, and I believe they could burst into flames. I believe they can be trolled by nefarious people. And I also believe in terms of a radiation side of things, they're absolutely lethal. That's my belief. And I feel strongly enough about that, that I won't get into any of my friends' cars that have got electric cars. Yeah. That's oh. me. I don't, they can do whatever they like, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think this is the thing is that a lot of where we get into trouble is because all of us have got really strong beliefs that we really believe in. Yes, no, but there's a huge gray area where we don't really know what we think. And therefore, all the stuff we've blamed everyone else for saying I took it because my boss said to the doctor said to we've got areas in our life where we're doing that I wrapped my phone in tin foil because someone on YouTube told me to. Yeah, it's the same. It's it's the same delusion that the norm that we we complain about the normies having these delusions, but the truth or community has some worse delusions. Yeah. yeah, and it's um and then that's the thing too about like cult behavior as well is that even Catherine, even you and me sitting here right now saying, you guys, I don't think that EBS was what you think it is. It's just a normal. We're gonna get pushback. We're gonna get fair game. Oh, massive. Get, yeah, people are gonna try to censor us because that's what cults do right? That's what cults do. So yeah. if you are in a community where you can't question the narrative, where you can't question, where you can't say to that YouTuber, hey, I'm, I'm kind of suspicious that this EBS was not what you guys think it is. It just seems really normal. And you get censored for that or kicked out of the group. You're in a fucking cult. Like yeah. that's what cults do. And that's one thing like I know, Catherine, I, I've talked about it online. We've, I, I know both of us kind of want to remove ourselves from these communities because we want to be able to question the, the narrative, whether that narrative is coming from the mainstream media or from YouTube. It's still a narrative that's being sold. And I want to always be questioning that because the minute you take the knee, the minute you take the knee to anyone, whether it be the mainstream media or YouTube, if you're taking the knee to somebody and not questioning them, the minute that starts to happen, we're in trouble as a society, right? We, oh, we, it, it, we constantly, that's a good point. constantly got, questioning. Yeah, we've got to be with in a community. If you've got a community, you've got to be able to have these challenging discussions. So in the UK, I don't know how much anyone in America will have heard, but it's gone completely bonkers with people being censored you've probably a lot of you have probably heard about russell brand and what's been going on with him now you and i have had so many and when i'm saying you and i please don't think i'm pretending that bryce and i are special along with so many millions of other people have had so many conversations that's had, where we've said bryce both things can be true yeah so someone let's let's just put a scenario out here because we've had it's gone mad in the UK, Bryce, that something really weird's going on because we've also got other um, alternative media personalities that are now having their foot home search like Lawrence Fox for having said something about the cameras. It's really gone completely mad of really coming down on people really hard. But let's just take, because a lot of people would have heard of the Russell Brand situation because a lot of people in America know who he is as well. Now, 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago, he was a serious drug addict, which he's talked about loads. Now, if any of you here have ever got really drunk in your life or ever been on drugs, there will be times where you either will do things you're ashamed of or that you can't remember. So there's a lot of people have got drunk and not been able to remember exactly what they did. By me saying this, I'm not saying it's right. 
I'm not saying it's right, but humans do stupid things all the time. Yeah. yeah. And you hope you learn from them. And sometimes you don't and you die, you know, um, or you hurt someone else in the process. You know, there's loads of people that have, have sped in their car. And if you're the unlucky person where an animal or a child's walked out in front of you and you've killed them, you might spend the rest of your life in jail. But there's lots of us that have sped in our car and touch wood, been lucky enough not to have someone walk out in front of us. Right. So some some choices are more. So someone could or could not have done something bad in the past and they might or might not remember that. And I was watching a television programme with my husband last night to try and switch off. And you would not believe it was about a programme. Do you have Big Brother over in America? Yeah. yeah. So this was about a very famous um, lady in the UK called Jay Goody, who was one of the first Big Brother stars. And um, she was really famous and she ended up dying of cervical cancer. So we were watching this programme and it was heart wrenching. But this was only 10 years ago. And the way the news, the press, the the programme talk about her as a fat pig, as a as a slut, as this or that. And the, the things they showed, it was absolutely disgusting. But at the time, everyone was laughing and thought it was accessible. Now, if you put today's standards on it, they'd all be in jail, they'd all be prosecuted, they'd all be. So this is what I mean, is, is that both things were true. So someone could have done really atrocious things. I mean, one of the reporters was saying, I can't believe... I spoke about her like this. I can't believe I plastered these pictures of her all over the newspapers. I look back now knowing how where the regulations are now, and I'm horrified I behave like that. But at the time, everyone was laughing. Yeah. So it doesn't mean it's right. It just means that someone could have had a really dodgy past, but they could also have changed based on the information they know. So look at when we're talking about the Illuminati. Look at when we're talking about other nefarious activities that are going on a lot of the people that we've learned from are people that have been in that life yeah. and that's how we know what's going yeah. on because if we haven't we wouldn't know about this abuse i mean it's horrific i've seen people talk about on certain telegram groups that anybody with particular last names should just be executed and it's shocking to me i'm like that is what happened in world war ii like exactly because somebody has a last name means nothing it means nothing it's their actions and, and we thank god we have people with certain last names that are whistleblowers because they cared enough to try to inform the public about what their family you know how hard that's got to be to go up against oh, the fucking family horrendous. i mean even if they're you know even if you know your family is full of psychopaths there's still a bond there because they're your family so to be able to to whistleblow to be able to call them out takes a lot of courage it takes a oh, lot of courage absolutely. and to see people have just this disgusting it's disgusting like any uh, you know i I've, I've i've questioned a lot with like the the royal children like what's going to happen with them and people like well you know they should probably just be you know whatever too and it's like these are children these are babies they're babies and i think they're precious and yeah. i think that, that if we're given the light the, the proper therapy and love they could be functioning members of society they just need that love and that therapy they're babies they didn't choose this just like you didn't choose your where you are they didn't choose this mm. so you know so i just it's almost like with with this delusional thinking and uh, on on both sides there's this sense of evil that's really shining through and that's um something we we just have to remember to be compassionate and fair and ground ourselves and make sure we're not following the crowd make sure we're not you know what's that saying um just because something's popular doesn't mean it's right and just because something yeah. is, doesn't mean it's popular you know you always have to be questioning your own integrity in certain things and so yeah it's um and it's okay if we we've all gotten lost in the crowd we've all gotten caught up in like the big whirlwind of emotion but to again to learn from that and say no i'm not yeah. even that's a form of spell casting and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be a follower i'm gonna be my own person i'm gonna listen to what other people have to say i'll listen and then i'll check myself i'll go and check myself i encourage that all the time on my channel even with the, the silly deep dives i do that don't really matter to today's world 
still check it. Just check it for yourself. You know, it's 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 um because your your thoughts are valuable. And I feel like too, Catherine. I feel like this is something our grandparents just knew to do. I feel like this is something our great. Oh, it just so do. completely. We we've really lost it, and our poor younger generations. You know, how are they going to learn unless we learn to keep calm, entertain a different point of view? I cannot tell you, even as recently as last week, you know, um, when you meet people, uh, you know, you can have, you can meet people on screen or hear about them or see their circumstances. And then the nature of humans is we will make judgments. Yeah. We've, it's a survival instinct to make judgments. You've got to make a judgment all the time. If you're a deer, you've got to decide whether it's safe to come out and go and out, eat the food or not. We're exactly the same. Inherent in our survival instincts is you constantly have to make judgments about things all the time. But the difference is, is do you learn from them? And I can tell you, I, I still get it very wrong with people. You know, I'll make judgments and then you have a conversation with you and be like, oh my God. And it's so true that saying that they say, you know, every single person is going through something. Every single person. I had a really good friend say to me this morning about, well, I wasn't born as a confident person. And, and I, you know, everyone's got their challenges. Everyone's pushing them out. And some people are forced to do it more than others because they've got horrendous circumstances, which mean that it, that it is literally do or die. And other people are on life journeys this time when they're blessed enough to have a bit more choice in the matter. But if we don't keep listening, we'll keep making the same mistakes again. When I first heard about electric cars, I thought, oh, this sounds amazing. And then I'm gradually learning more and more. But then someone might tell me something else that changed my mind again. I don't know, but I'm going to remain open to it because the one thing I do know is there's masses I don't know. You know, we're talking yeah. all about the, our history and um, where we came from and things like this and Tartaria and free energy. But we've got to stop talking about it and actually start using it and start doing it. It's all very well, like you said, this difference between the idio and the gnosis. And I think, and i guilty of this because I love researching stuff. <laughs> I love it. But then the test of it is how does it feel in my body? This is one of the mood sachets. I can read up as much as I like about the ingredients and I can believe or not believe what I choose to believe about the company and how good their manufacturing is and how quality control is. But at the end of the day, the ultimate test is my body, my mind, how does it feel to me? How do I react to it? And that's got to be the ultimate judge for me. Yeah, ab absolutely. And that's something I feel like with it with and I love the EDO too. I, listen, I was there's this Instagram page I loved with a guy like me loves history and he's this fabulous yeah. gay guy and he's like, you know why I love history? You get to gossip. You just yeah. gossip about people from the past. Like, you know, it's, it's very in entertaining. But yeah, and, and so I, but yeah, it's also that the most important though is how are you feeling? And sometimes I think in our modern society we're so focused on EDO that we forget to check in with the gnosis and yeah. that children, for example, I mean, I've told you this, Catherine, I stopped eating meat when I was 14. I didn't know what a vegetarian was, but I just knew that every time I ate meat, I got sick. But when I was five, I remember getting she crab soup, which is big in South Carolina. And the meat of the she crab was still in the form of the crab. You had to mush it up. And I remember crying, just yeah. a fit because I didn't realize at five that this was an animal. Yeah. And, um, and so knowing kids know you know i knew and even with eating meat later on when my parents would force me to i would feel sick afterwards like yeah you're getting, and that's something so simple we see this with with food how many times do we see people eat a raw apple and then they have a stomach ache afterwards but they think because they've been told they've been taught the edo that this apple is good for them but they don't realize that they're vata and so they're energetic yeah principles can't digest the apple needs to be cooked and or but your body is telling you like this this isn't so but we've become so we, we we're, we're trusting what's happening is we're like we're trusting people outside of ourselves that's what happens when we when we listen to the media instead of ourselves when we listen to a youtuber instead of ourselves we're putting our trust into somebody else and not within us for our own lives and so yeah. And that's sad that we need to claim that autonomy back. And and again, that doesn't mean you have to stop listening to you, dupes. Please don't. We love that you listen no. to us. <laughs> but you can question and you can research and it's a conversation. I don't think there's anything Catherine and I know that's that's far greater than anything any one of, one of you know. 
you know, and I know I've gotten it at, when I first was getting big on YouTube. I would have people email me all the time asking me financial questions about the new financial system. And I'd be like, fuck if I know. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not an economist. Like, I don't, I don't know, you know, just because I have a YouTube channel doesn't mean that I know more than you. It's just, I wanted to talk about certain things. And so really just trust yourself guys and, and come and ground yourself, like ground yourself into who you are, not who some YouTuber says you should be, not who some media or celebrity person says you should be. Who are you? Because you say that's who you are. You know, and if you, well, you hit on such an important point, Bryce, I just want to reiterate, if you're in any group, whether it's a friendship group, whether it's a YouTube chat or whatever, if if you're being shamed for politely asking a question or questioning something, then you are in a cult. End 100%. of. You know, you shouldn't be shaming anyone. You, I do think there's a difference. You know, if you're if you're the type of person that puts something across really aggressively or insulting someone to make your point, that's completely different. That's a boundary and that's disrespectful. But if you're in a respectful way asking a different question or whatever, or or expect, have you thought about it from this point of view? I, for one, I'm really, really grateful because I haven't got time to do all this research on my own. I'm really grateful when people say, well, have you thought about this? And I'm like, oh, my God, no, I didn't, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome. I love when people put their opinions. And, and you're right. Like, if you're going to be abusive about having a different opinion, that's one thing. But to say, hey, I have a question about this. And have you thought about it from this perspective? Or what about this? That's awesome. Because that's how we grow and we learn and we evolve. You know, yeah. it's why, you know, in, you know, the American government, we're supposed to have a balance of power. That's one thing we're taught in school, because there's multiple people in our government that are debating and that are voting together on different it's all these it's supposed to be an ideal world we know it's corrupt now but that balance of power and that's what we have to have in our lives too listening to different perspectives listening to different um different ways of seeing and doing things and then coming up with an even better way of doing that said thing do you think people like um like einstein or Isaac Newton, if these people really were who they prefer, we'll just say they were who they said who they say they were. You think that they were such great scientists because they just stuck to their own opinion and didn't listen to anybody else? No, and they tried it. They had to keep trying and failing and trying and failing. And you know, this is what I'm saying. You know, obviously, I'm a health coach. I work with people and their animals on the health side of things. And you know, it. You can say all that isn't, but the ultimate thing is you have to do, you have to try, you have to make a change. If you've got any challenge in your life in whatever area, the only thing you know for certain is what you're doing at the moment isn't working. So you need to try something different. Yeah. You don't need to blame yourself up about it. You don't need to come up with excuses for why. You just need to decide to make a change and try something different. And when you keep doing that and go into things, you will find what's right for you. You know, you really Absolutely. will. I'm laughing because for the Americans, you guys, I don't know if you guys remember studying the Articles of Confederation. Before we had our Constitution, they, they created what they called the Articles of Confederation. And it was so little government that it didn't work. They had to go, oops, and go back to the drawing board and write the Constitution because even our forefathers were like, well, that didn't work. Let's let's do this again. We had so little government that it got it got unruly. So so yeah. it's, it's constant. Yeah, and it's constantly. I mean, the greatest people that we admire, our heroes, our scientists, our doctors, the the writers of the world that that we love so much. They didn't just come out doing in, incredible things. They they questioned themselves. They they got knocked down and got back up again. And so that's what creates that greatness. It's that resistance, right? The more you the, the more you screw up and you have to restart again, it's like building up a muscle with a weight. The more it breaks down, the stronger it gets. And so always put yourself in a position where you're able to ask, challenge your own self and challenge those around you because that's how we become, not to sound cheesy, but that's how we become great again. <laughs> it, it, it really is. It is how you become great again. And also, there's nothing more appealing than a, a person that has got not a lack of confidence, but a humbleness to admit when they change their mind, when they cause corrected. And I would really hope in this community for whoever it is that we can open it up to if someone needs to cause correct and has done something in the past, be the bigger person, come out and say it. Yeah. come out and admit to it and just allow people to make that change because if all we want to do is keep the vibration of punishment going 
then we're not going to create this new world that we're all hoping for so no absolutely it's it's enough when before we sign off guys Catherine and i have been talking to a lot of cult survivors like claire headley um davy jackson like these are people who have very our friend kelly teal who oh, have yeah. very much said i fucked up i joined a cult accidentally and, it, and 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 i've heard kelly say with andrew gold like how embarrassing it was to realize but just just to own it and just to own it anyway and how many people they're helping by by talking about their story and so don't ever be in, in, in that humility to be able to say i screwed up and um and this is my experience so hopefully you won't ever have to go down that road too and so yeah absolutely guys anyway um catherine what's going on in your channel what's going on with you any new stuff for the oh, we've got i've been really busy because i've been away traveling so it's been quite charged on my channel but for anyone that really talking about empowering yourself did a beautiful interview with my friend marina who's a holistic dentist yesterday and she is a brilliant example because she was trained by the medical profession in the conventional way she had a freak accident which meant that she had some time off and decided to explore some different and then realized that everything she'd been taught as a traditional dentist was not great but she has the humility to share that journey and learn from it and course correct and i think everyone will get something out of that interview because we're, it's very solution based i've got a couple of great people coming on next week which will be different get new guests to my channels where they've been very much on the awakening journey and they're going to share some of the lessons they've learned and the tips for how we can keep this open mind keep on this exploratory journey but still have really make the most out of our lives now not be putting everything on the back burner and waiting um and also like you i've got an exciting new course coming through but next week we are hoping to do an instagram live so for our coffee chat next week please sign up to both bryce and my instagrams the links will be below because we're going to try an instagram live because you'll be traveling and so we want to be able to do something where we can be more flexible on the location of it and everything yeah make sure i'll put guys i'll put in the description box below a link to Catherine's instagram as well as my instagram um i'm excited about this i know we talked about going forward as well perhaps doing our coffee chats as lives anyway yeah. when we come back to the youtube platform so if that's something you guys would so that you so we're not just talking to to ourselves that we can actually have an interactive conversation with you guys like we're actually having coffee together so let us know your thoughts about that um down in the comment section below and again i'll put both our our, our instagrams um in the description box you can make sure you're subscribed or subscribed follow whatever the word is for instagram no, no, whatever it is yeah <laughs> i love instagram listen if i'm not careful i will sit on instagram all day watching people's reels people are freaking funny like there are some really really one of my favorite people ever you guys you'll have to find this guy i sent him to Catherine. he's it's white lady comedy it's this black guy who's a comedian who talks about how white women have this ability to like animal whisper like he shows videos of these white women out there rescuing wild animals and he's hysterical talking about it um and so i love i i'm really enjoying the instagram and all the the con the, the 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 cool humans that are out there that have really funny funny pages and i just i love it i i have to be one of the really sad people and i know everyone takes the piss out of it but i am a mad cat lady and for me it's such a great pick me up you know if you can um if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed if you're feeling a bit down go and look at some of the cat videos <laughs> because you can't help because the great thing is i mean i do find some of the dog and other animals they they could be verging on abuse to be quite honest um you know someone sent me one the other day and it was all this monkey and dog and i was like there's no way they do that those animals have been drugged but the thing is if any of us have got cats we know we can't force a cat to do anything so i've never seen a cat video on instagram that's made me think the cat's being abused let me put it that way so i can relax and just enjoy them there is a really funny um here with monkeys and dogs that's funny because monkeys are in india and I, I i you never see them what the street dogs and the monkeys interacting at all I it's like, and i think the dog the street dogs know that the monkeys will will, will kill them so they stay yeah. away from the monkeys but there is one uh, account this guy does these voiceovers they send him videos of dogs and he does voiceovers for the dogs and he's hysterical he says he's so funny just the dogs are just so innocent and just so yeah. lovely. 
just so sweet. And so, you know, um, so I, I love it, you guys. So make sure. Yeah, you can always a way to cheer yourself up. If you're yeah. feeling overwhelmed, go and look at some of those videos and you'll cheer, <laughs> cheer yourself up. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, you guys. All right. Well, um, let us know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Um, I hope all of you guys are doing well. I know Catherine and I have both been sick and I hear from some of you guys that you've been sick too. So if you're, if you're in, on the mend, please take care of yourself. And, um, and yeah, we will talk to you guys soon. Bye everybody. Bye.